Hey guys, this is a tutorial on hydraulic engines. I haven't seen one out there and it took me ages to um, find out how they worked. So I just thought I'd make it easier for you guys. So a hydraulic engine is something that can't really be based off a ranger. It needs something like a bearing from a beacon sensor. Extremely powerful and I love them because they actually apply torque to the engine as well. So the uh say you had a say you had an engine like this as a hydraulic engine, it would actually um try to roll the boat. Engine like Engines like this are just amazing, and they're just simply more stable, because there's no sliders, they're more reliable to make. Alright, let's get to it. So, just as a basic one, just going to find a wheel. Now, it's just like every other engine that you're going to ever make. The larger the diameter is for the crankshaft, the more leverage or power it's going to have. It's going to be able to apply less speed to it though. So you really need to find a balance between the two. There is a point where they just get too big and it can just simply not work. It's gonna spawn. It doesn't really matter what you spawn, it doesn't have to be exactly like this. But just like every other engine, weights are really important. So the more this crankshaft weighs, the more power it's gonna have. But you have no idea how much power these things can apply. It could spin the wheels of a uh, a wheel weighing, I don't know, 20,000 units, and it could just make it do a burnout easily. So, you really need to find a balance of where it's actually a reasonable amount. So, this is just accessed onto the. See, not very well accessed. Alrighty, whatever. It's being weird. Now, all you really need is just one hydraulic for a basic hydraulic engine. For every hydraulic that you add, it just becomes harder and harder to make it run smooth because they all need to run like in unison. If they're not, they're all just going to be applying force and in opposite directions, and it's just going to hate it. The place that you connect it to isn't all that important. What is important is that you apply a locator to the point of contact on the hydraulic. So we just get this, and no collide it. Now if you're planning on putting more than one hydraulic onto a wheel, if there's different points of contact, say this hydraulic was placed here and another one was placed over here, you would probably need two locators to signify the points of where the hydraulics actually make contact. Just weld this for now. Now what you need is a beacon sensor. If you place a prop at 45 degrees, it'll always face directly downwards or directly upwards. So that beacon sensor is right. You should probably make it a bit closer. It needs to be fairly close to the prop. The distance away from here to where the actual 
um, hydraulic ends at doesn't matter all that much as long as it's in the same uh, as long as it's like centered with the same point oh, that's confusing. so all you do is just get a beacon sensor out facing the wheel and then you just right click on the beacon sensor using the beacon sensor tool and then right click again on the locator to link it to it. Now you can use E2 and all that, but I just want to keep it simple. So, all you need is a multiplier. And the multiplier is basically going to amplify the bearing. So if this sit is sitting on the right, it's going to have a bearing that's a positive number which is going to force the hydraulic downwards, pushing it. And then once it's to the left, it's going to get a negative number and it's going to want to pull. And it, after that, it's basically just a chain reaction. For now, I'll just use a button. All we're doing is just multiplying the value of the bearing by any value you want. And it's not like a normal engine where you can just, with thrusters, where you can just um, apply thousands and thousands of thrust. Ten on this. Is actually quite a lot. Now slow down time, you'll see that the weld can't actually hold on to the locator. So to fix that, all you do is just parent, making the wheel the parent and the locator the child, and after that it'll run a whole lot cleaner. Now, hydraulic engines really need a flywheel, or some sort of mechanism to retain its momentum. So the more you make the wheel weigh, the smoother it's going to run. Like if I made this thing weigh 5,000, it would just absolutely fly. But that's just ridiculous. I mean, who has a 5,000 unit? Basically a 5 ton engine. A 10 ton. And that's it. Uh, I hope you found this helpful. It wasn't the most detailed tutorial, but there isn't really much to say about hydraulic engines. It's just that easy.